Hey guys, welcome to the Positive Experience Podcast, where we look at the good, the bad, and the ugly in living your best life. Today's segment is on the HEADS. The acronym stands for Health Experts and Disruptors. Let's dive in. Hey guys, welcome aboard to the Positive Experience Podcast. Today, I've got a local osteopath, Daniel Kirkbride, uh, joining us today. Howdy, Dan. How are you? Hey, mate. Good, good. That's the way. Love in isolation. <laughs> <laughs> now, for everyone at home, this is the first time that Daniel and I are speaking. So, um, you know, we're just getting the feelers out and um, and getting to know one another. And uh, you guys are joining along in the conversation. So um, this is about week four, week five of the COVID-19 uh, isolation. So we're all doing our best. Um, so I just wanted to start at the very beginning, Dan. So if we unpack... Uh, Daniel's story. Can I start from, say, your superhero origin story, like where you're from, where you grew up? Paint a picture for us. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so I'm a local boy from the west. I uh, grew up in Werribee. Um, pretty much, yeah, fin- I've been around Point Cooks for the last five or six years. So I started my personal training. I started as a personal trainer when I was 18, finished high school, uh, just opened up a backyard gym. I think as most uh, PTs and um, practitioners start uh, in, the, in the garage uh, with a few pieces of equipment. Um, did that for about three, four years, and then uh, while I was studying at uni, so I started to be an osteopath, which is a five year degree. Um, and then throughout that time, I pretty much progressed from the, the, the home gym through a good life in Point Cook. So I built out my business pretty, pretty big in the good life Point Cook there, and then finished up my uni degree. Uh, what year are we in? 2020. So I finished my uni degree, end of 2018, and then opened up my studio, which is now in Williams Landing, in February last year. So I've been practicing as an osteopath, uh, yeah, about 13 months now, so not really too long, still pretty fresh, but I've been in like the SNC um, kind of rehab space for about six and a half years now, and that's where my passion has been, like kind of strength conditioning, more as it relates to gym based uh, programs, I guess, not really too much interest in terms of sport and that kind of stuff. Uh, from a personal level, I love sport. I played soccer, played footy for a number of years. Um, but in terms of like uh, my practice, it's more, you know, powerlifting, weightlifting um, cool. and that kind of stuff. So if I was to go back to your high school days um, and take a snapshot on what Dan was like during high school, did you already know back then that you were heading towards health because maybe you were going to playing sport or maybe someone in your family was involved in, in health? Like, just give us an idea of what, as, as a high, high school version of Daniel um, and, you know, the decisions that took you onto this this path. Yeah, it's kind of funny, actually. Um, I was pretty overweight as a year seven, year eight um, student. Wow. Okay. Um, and my original plan was I wanted to be an engineer or an accountant because my dad and my mum. Okay. Um, that went through till about year 11 and then I realised that I hated sitting at a desk, I hated numbers and I hated being inside. That's not <laughs> so, helpful. Um, <laughs> I, got I think it was like year nine, year ten, I had a, a coach at footy that was just an ex-army veteran and he absolutely smashed me in pre-season and I just fell in love with training and sport and gym and then from that point I was you know, quite involved with all that kind of stuff and yeah, I think around mid-year 11, changed my mind and really wanted to get involved in health in some shape or form and then I wanted to be a physio <laughs> but uh, back then I think the score was like 98 to get in the physio and I... Uh, I wasn't yeah. the, the best kid at school, so I think I got a I got a decent score. I think I got eighty one or eighty two, and, and ended up getting into osteo, and yeah, never looked back. Congratulations! You know, it's really important that we highlight that because we all have our own individual stories, and you're kind of umming and ahhing your way along, and then there's this experience that you have, you know. And for yours, it was uh, you know maybe you're a bigger bloke when you're a pup, but then you got flogged by this one guy, and then it just set you off like a catalyst down this pathway. So, you know, I congratulate you on just following your curiosity and where your passions were because you could be mm-hmm. on the desk because you suppressed that, man. So big pat on the back. Yeah. I think a big thing too was um, I spent a lot of time around physios. I had a lot of injuries. Um, I think a lot of osteophysios, we all end up getting into it getting into it because we've all had our own experiences. And for me, yeah, I had uh, about three or four serious knee injuries. So I spent a lot of time at um, a physio in Hoppers Crossing, um, Michael Chikorico is really good. I'm not sure if you know him. Um, yeah, he helped me heaps with uh, PCL injury, meniscus, and like five, six dislocations. So, yeah, spending a lot of time, you know, with him as well as, you know, getting involved in the gym and having that coaching footy, I think the combination of that kind of 
sparked my interest in just health and how to handle the body. And do... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <it's> <laughs> right. You know, I think it's really important that you have good mentors early on, you know, because um, I, I'm also a product of the Western Suburbs and I worked with uh, Mark Crown and Shane McLeod at Symmetry Physio and Hoppers. Um, you know, I was there for about eight years. So, you know, big tip of the hat. I know Michael and the guys at Hoppers Physio. And I think, um, you know, what we're all interested in is we all sit along this spectrum of health. You know, you sort of have sickness on one end and wellness on the other. And then we all have an idea of where we want to sit on that. We just want to be the best version of ourselves and trying to do it as simply as we can be, really. So, um, mm -hmm. but, you know, on that, I just want to come back to your aha moment. So, you know, you were doing a footy preseason. Um, you got flogged and then you thought, man, this could be a pathway for me. So when you were doing the PT thing and, you know, it was really your vibe, was there something in osteo that you found, okay, this is my particular stream of osteo that I'm really big on or, you know, you're pretty open and you're, you know, getting a lot of experiences in different particular injuries? Yes, hello. Yeah, it is like. <laughs> um. We'll just ignore yeah. that. I think it's a false alarm. <laughs> there we go. Um, I guess it's changed a bit, man. Like, so, like, when I first started PT, my idea was always, like, into the, the functional fitness as much as I hate that term now. Like, back then, to me, that meant, you know, like, being involved in, you know, proper movement, um, looking at quality rather than smashing people, that sort of thing. So, I went through and did an internship at Woodford Sports Science, got super involved in SNC and, um, athlete development and it was always about you know quality of movement in terms of you know squat dead push pull core stuff so i was always super interested in that kind of thing when i first um because that kind of in terms of the time frame when i started doing my woodford internship that was when i just finished high school and went into osteo i'll be completely honest i had no idea what an osteo was what they did never heard of it <laughs> my um, careers advisor just said oh you want to be a physio like you know this is maybe a, a uh, an alternate stream to get into it so for my head, I was always kind of getting into rehab, strength and conditioning, movement, that sort of stream, I guess, of osteophysio. Um, but over the time, that's definitely changed. Like the last, you know, like I mentioned before, like probably the last six or eight months, I've gotten really into that um, functional medicine, holistic health, and just looking at the body rather through all dimensions rather than, I guess, as physios, physios, we tend to be more musculoskeletal and the other ones kind of get put on the back burner. I think now the goal for me is like, how do I integrate all this knowledge over the last five, six years as a musculoskeletal SNC, you know, specialist, as, even though we can't say specialist, um, and then integrate that into understanding the body as a whole. I think that's really important, you know, just keeping an open mind and continuing to um, self-educate and learn, you know, lifelong mm -hmm. student, you know, it, it never stops really, does it? So um, I commend you on that. If, if we're looking at the things that, you know, you've, you've mentioned Christian Woodford, so um, I'm familiar with the work. Did you have to go out to Moorabbin or was that all online? Yeah, so I was going to Moorabbin and going to Bondura for uni at the same time. It was fun times. <laughs> well, and were you working part-time as a student or was the PT sort of keeping your head above water? Uh, so at that stage, I was still studying. So I basically, I finished school and I'd started my Cert 34. And during my Cert 34, I was doing my Woodford internship. So uh, I think I was just working at Kmart or pickpacking in a warehouse or something until about the end of first year uni. And then I yep. started getting doing some paid personal training work. Mate, we all have war stories. You know, if you were at Crown and um, there's the arcade downstairs, I worked at that arcade as my high school job into uni. And so if you passed a clown that was emptying bins, that was probably me. <laughs> so we all have rough rough gigs when you're in uni. So, you know, I empathise for the students that are out there. Um, okay, so, you know, you, you're you in in the grind now. You're, you're pushing along with your passion up there in Williams Landing. How do you make things work? Like, are you early in the morning, you raise, you, you rise up out of bed and you really plan the days out or do you have a bit of a team behind you, the support? Give us an idea of, um, of the happenings of Williams Landing. Um, yeah, man. So, it's been a bit of a journey over the last 12 months. There's been a few moves and a, a few events and certain things like that, as we all as we all do. But, um, yeah, I guess with me, it's just, it's just me there. So, I, I'm a sole practitioner. Um, and sole business owner in saying that, you know, obviously I have a support network. There's my girlfriend who does a lot for me in terms of organization and content production and all that kind of stuff. Uh, in terms of my uh, schedule though, I guess, yeah, I'm definitely an early morning person. I'm not as early as I used to be. I think five years in a row of getting up at 5am for 5.15 sessions of PT kind of 
kicked my <laughs> ass a bit. So um, since we've been uni going into osteo and having the luxury of people seeing you at reasonable times, I think um, for me, yeah, usually up at about 6.30, get my, I like to get my session in. I find the first half of the day I need some me time. So it's like get up, uh, train, um, do some education, do some reading, go through my morning routine, and then usually I'm out working about 11, 12, um, and work through to about 7 or 8 o'clock at night, and then, you know, wind down after that. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a nice lifestyle, I guess, a bit of a luxury that you don't have if you're in 9 to 5, but, yeah, it's what works for me. I find if I have my morning time, then the rest of the day is pretty good, and I can give more to my patients. Awesome. And just on that, is there a special hack that you have to go to sleep? Like it sounds like during the day you're up and about, you're really busy, you can pump it out. Do you struggle, Do you put an emphasis on your sleep so you need like six hours not negotiable or you have that superpower, you can fall asleep, no dramas? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty good at sleeping. Um, <laughs> That's good. I've always worried about that. Like, I mean, obviously during the startup phases, the first three to six months, I was probably like not sleeping very well, not eating very well, you know, just getting things done as I needed to. But um, I feel like probably about six months in, I found a good routine and now I'm, yeah, pretty, I'm in bed by like 11 most nights and up at about six, six thirty, seven if I'm lazy. So it's usually about seven, eight hours of good sleep. And as soon as I hit the pillow, I'm out snoring and my girlfriend hates it. <laughs> ah, jeez. It's one that's definitely super power if you can sleep well, mate. Hang on to that. So if I was yeah. to go back to your personal war story, you were mentioning that you had like four injury setbacks with the knee. And you don't have to dive too deeply into the injury that you suffered, but could you give us an idea of, um, you know, a good thing that came out of that knee, in those knee injuries? You know, maybe you had to work on your resilience and, you know, just deal with setbacks, you know. So it was more of a mental thing. You, you know, you found out that you had to be a lot stronger in your head. Um, could you share a little bit about your insight at that time or, or what you feel you got out of that experience? Yeah, 100%. Well, yeah, that was about six or seven occasions of money, unfortunately. But I'd say the two that stand out the most to me were like, just ones that happened at bad times. I mean, I guess it was never good timing, but um, one in particular, I think I was 17 and I'd just broken into the first team as a goalkeeper playing soccer. And you know, I'd been working at it for two, three years to, to get that gig and about three games into my uh, first season in seniors and playing really good. I, I told my PCL um, and was out for the season, essentially lost my spot. So I think, yeah, like the two biggest things that came out of it were yeah, mental resilience and toughness in terms of having to come back from that um, the disappointment of it, um, having worked so hard for it. But I guess that's that's a good life skill to have. Like I'd rather that happen to me at 16, 17, because I feel like taking those lessons and that experience is you know going to be super important when it comes to business and just life in general over the next 30, 40 years and already over the last 12, 18 months with a lot of setbacks business-wise, like at the end of the day, I feel like it's all the same thing. It's just expressed in different ways in different areas of your life. So having that experience there has allowed me to like be a bit more resilient in other areas. Um, and then from an educational point of view, like spending so much time around physios, chiros, um, exercise physiologists, coaches, PTs, like people that are in my future field, which I didn't know at the time, um, being able to figure out what I liked about them, what I didn't like about them, what they did well, what they didn't do well, and just use myself as a test dummy to do all this rehab. Man, awesome answer. So you were really in the field there, just tasting a lot and sampling a lot of things from the buffet menu. And then in the end, you know, you're going to be like um, the, the real McCoy because you have all these great experiences and you continue to learn, man. So big pat on the back. You know, you're doing really, really well. Um, just, just on that, um, I'm about to transition over to some quick fire questions. You've already touched on a lot of things because, you know, the premise here of um, this Positive Experience podcast is, you know, you're going with the good, the bad and the ugly in living your best life and, you know, you're early into your own business, you know, and you're wearing lots of different hats a lot with, along with your girlfriend and um, it's hard work, you know, and that's why I like putting a lot of emphasis on, on your personal journeys because you don't wake up one day and just think you're going to open up a shop and take on all the overhead and the expense of that, you know, so we've got to celebrate the hard work that you're doing. So, um, but yeah. in saying that, is there something that you're working on at the moment um, that maybe no one sees? And maybe it's a new, um, you know, PB for your squad or you're dead or maybe you're a bit um, deficient in a pool sort of, sort of thing or maybe you're trying out a new diet plan or something, you know. Is there, what, what's, what are you working on? What have you got the white lab coat on and working on in the lab? Yeah, um, there's a few things in the mix, I guess, given the, the, the recent circumstances that kind of turned to turned a U-turn on a lot of things and turned oh, things yeah. on its head. Um, so I had to, I guess the word of the week has been pivot really quickly. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, in terms of, from a business model, yeah, I had some ideas in terms of what I was going to implement, but due to the circumstances, I've had to change. So 
biggest one for me was I had a, about three seminars coming up, which were in Melbourne, Sydney, and Adelaide. We're really looking forward to them. We're sold out, ready to go. Um, and that was kind of my big thing I was working on, really wanting to build out the education streams. So um, for that, I've basically decided to kick myself up the ass and create a full online website mentorship where all the people that could have come to my seminars can now actually access it online and build up an education stream and a bit of a community there for personal trainers um, and allied health students can learn more about SNC and rehab and how to integrate those two worlds. So that's something I've been working on pretty heavily lately and I think, um, yeah, it's the thing I'm most excited about, like creating a solid platform for people who want to do similar things to what I've done in terms of how to take osteo, how to take rehab and how to like blend that together and find this mix that they can you know, do their passion with and um, yeah, I guess that's yeah, the biggest thing for me. Mate, I can see the twinkle in your eye when you're describing that. You know, it's it's a big passion of yours, and I can I can see that. So, given that you've explained your story of how you've experienced those worlds, um, it gives you the you know almost a badge of honour because you've already sustained a lot of you know shellfire from learning all these different things from your own injuries and from observing a lot of different professionals in their craft. So. Man, I'd love to promote the stuff that you put together. So just reach out and we'll, we'll publish it on our channel. So that's, that's awesome, Daniel. Congratulations. Sounds good, man. Thank you. Excited. So um, I'm going to switch over to um, uh, this little segment, a bit of fun. It's called Fold or Double Down. So I'll just ask you simple questions and then tell me if you'd fold that scenario or you double down on it. Sound okay? Well, uh, explain to me. What's, what's that mean? Fold or double down? <laughs> so, for example, would you fold a night out with the boys and stay in watching Netflix? Are you a homebody or would you be out with the boys? Fold or double down? So if I said double down, I'd be down for it. Yeah. Fold, I would not do it. I'm going to yeah. answer it. Cool. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. So, okay, let's go with that one. So would you fold a night out to stay in and watch Netflix? <laughs> oh. You'd fold. Good man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a homebody these days as well. Uh, how about if you got a free pair of tickets to Metallica? So a Metallica concert, is that your type of music? Would you take the tickets, fold or double down? Uh, double fold, you wouldn't take them. Okay, so you're folding on Metallica. Yeah, I'm not too big on them either. Okay, would you... Um, what was that? Give it to a mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, how about paying forward a coffee? Have you done that before? Double down. Okay, good man. And uh, well, this is kind of like a timestamp of what happened a couple of weeks ago, but the question I had here was whether you give away the last roll of toilet paper at Coles. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, well, things have changed now. The, you know, the supermarkets have replenished their stocks, but um, did, you, did you, you know, have a, a shortage? Did you have a crisis at home with the TP stocks? It was funny. I was I was taking the piss out of everyone and having a laugh about people hoarding toilet paper and food. And then about a week and a half later, I was um, I was hungry and couldn't wipe my ass. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. It's, I think it's one of those things. We'll look back at this time and think, man, I hope I conducted myself in the best sort of way that I, I could have with you know the circumstances. Because obviously, yeah. you know, it's a it's a big challenge for everyone. All right, mate. We're we're turning the corner, coming down the home stretch. Um, you've told us a lot about moving from the physical location and looking at taking on the opportunity with the online stuff, which is great. Is there anything else that you'd love to share with the audience? Any any things that um, you're passionate about? Maybe upcoming seminars that have been cancelled, unfortunately, but maybe other things that you're planning. Would there be anything else that you'd like to share? Um, yes, yeah, it's the two biggest things given the circumstances. Like the seminars will still go ahead, um, but it's, I think like, it's been a good opportunity for me to create this thing that I've been wanting to create for ages and haven't really had to kick up the ass to do so. Um, the other thing I really want to put together is uh, probably something you would be super interested in as well, to be honest, like creating some sort of like online platform for clients where it's not just an actual, like an osteophysio side of things, like going into the actual like holistic health and trying to create a platform where they can understand their body from like the functional medicine side of things and then integrate it with movement. I think that's something I've always wanted to do as well. Um, and more so the last six months, like how can we create something where it's complete healthcare all the way through? I don't know how it's going to work, but that's just been something in my head where I'm like, well, you've got all these skills in one category of functional med, you've got all these skills in SNC rehab. We know that it all integrates. How do we create something for the client who's got 
some sort of underlying chronic issue that's presenting as a musculoskeletal complaint that we know is not actually musculoskeletal origin, but how do we like take that person from A all the way through to Z with a process that's tangible? So excited, but don't know how I'm going to do it, but yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm a big believer in intention, you know, so you're you're setting the intention out there. You don't know how you're going to arrive to it, but you're just going to slowly chip away at it day over day and then it'll just manifest itself somehow um, because what you're saying is, you know, completely up my alley and there's a lot of people that I think may not understand or realise that they are suffering from something like a underlying chronic disease issue. Um, you know, in my own personal story, you know, I was pre-diabetic as a 30-year-old and, you know, had a young family and I stopped playing sport and... Um, I was heading down a traditional, say, Pacific Island pathway, and then that was the trigger for me, and then I switched up, and now my professional outlook is down this the chronic health disease um, sort of stream, you know, but my history before that was a lot of sports physio stuff. So I think yeah, um, yeah. If, if I was just to impart some experience for mine, it's just you'll, I think if you just follow where your curiosity, curiosity takes you, you just find things open up, you know. So I would even challenge you to say like 18 months ago, you probably wouldn't have fantasised about the things that you're talking about now, you know. And then from now where you are 18 months from today, you can just see like the exponential, you know, rise of how much you grow and develop. So, you know, I recognise the drive and, and the passions of, of what you're talking about and I appreciate that you're sharing it with us. Um, and I'm interested in, in seeing you through and, and helping you out where we can, mate, because it's you're, you're talking my language. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I guess if you're uh, if you're in the same position you were 18 months ago, it's probably not a good thing because you haven't really grown. So for me, it's like yeah, 18 months ago, I had no interest in gut health and all that stuff. It was always just about lifting heavy weights and fixing back pains and bench press and <laughs> all that kind of side of things. And then I guess over the last six months, through some personal experiences and people I know, it's like yeah, how do we actually integrate health with performance and blend those two together? And that's the big uh, interest for me now. Man, awesome. Yep, I'm preaching the same gospel, big fellow. Well done. So, okay, what would be um, the best way to reach you? Um, where are you in, in Williams Landing? Can we find you online? Give us some um, the, the particulars. Um, yeah, man, so, so I'm out at the moment. I'm in the luxury of my lounge room. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the, the clinic is located in Williams Landing just across from the shopping centre. So there's a big medical centre on level one. I'm just on level three in that same building. So if you need to come in to do face-to-face -face once the world is open again, that's where you can find me. Um, otherwise, online, Instagram and Facebook is dr.daniel.kirkbright. Awesome. So all the content will be posted on there. Great. Guys, that's Big Daniel over there. He's in Williams Landing. Um, he's going to have a lot of information online. I'd love to catch up again for a part two in six to 12 months' time. love to touch in and keep you accountable to your goals, mate. You know, <laughs> I want to make sure that you put this great stuff out online because, um, you know, I think there's a big need for it. And at the moment, I think it's underserviced. Like, a, a lot of people need this help. So, um, yeah, big pat on the back. Uh, that'll be it for us today. I'll um, catch up with you again soon. And thanks for your time today, Daniel. Awesome, mate. Thank you. All right. Take it easy. Have a good day. Yeah.